Welcome to Canterbury Cathedral on this very special day when we are giving thanks for the 75th anniversary of the restoration of peace to Europe, VE Day. And throughout this day, of course, there have been special events. Our silence at 11 o'clock, a silence of remembrance. And then at 3 o'clock, the announcement made by the Prime Minister back in 1945 at the, from Downing Street saying that the war was over and at that time the great bell of Bell Harry on the tower behind me here rang out for five minutes and still we have the broadcast of our Queen later this evening at nine o'clock and the singing of We'll Meet Again but we've paused in the middle of that to come to this quiet place it's a place actually of memorial it used to be part of the Deanery Garden, but in 1920 it was given over to be the memorial for the city, for the Great War. The end of that war, there was a vision that peace had been restored and it had been the war to end all wars. But of course, a short time later, the world was plunged into the desperate conflict, which was much more worldwide, which we are celebrating the end of in Europe today. We have to remember that the war was set to go on in the Far East and thousands of both British troops and Commonwealth troops were engaged in that. So there was a seriousness about the King's speech that night. But we've had a day of celebration and that will continue and we will now say a few short prayers as our evening prayer. O Lord, open thou our lips and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The first psalm for the eighth evening of the month is Psalm 41, and we say that now. Blessed is he that considereth the poor and needy. The Lord shall deliver him in the time of trouble. The Lord preserve him and keep him alive, that he may be blessed upon earth, and deliver not thou him into the will of his enemies. The Lord comfort him when he lieth sick upon his bed. Make thou all his bed in his sickness. I said, Lord, be merciful unto me, Heal my soul, for I have sinned against thee. Mine enemies speak evil of me. When shall he die and his name perish? And if he come to see me, he speaketh vanity, and his heart conceiveth falsehood within himself. And when he cometh forth, he telleth it. All mine enemies whisper together against me. Even against me do they imagine this evil. And let the sentence of guiltiness proceed against him. And now that he lieth, let him rise up no more. Yea, even mine own familiar friend, whom I trusted, who did also eat of my bread, hath laid great weight for me. But be thou merciful unto me, O Lord. Raise thou me up again, and I shall reward them. By this I know thou favourest me that mine enemy doth not triumph against me. And when I am in my health, thou upholdest me, and shalt set me before thy face for ever. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. A lesson from the 49th chapter of the prophet Isaiah, beginning at the first verse. Listen to me, O coastlands, and give attention, you peoples from afar. The Lord called me from the womb. From the body of my mother he named my name. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver he hid me away, and he said to me, You are my servant, 
Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have laboured in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity. Yet surely my right is with the Lord, and my recompense with my God. But now the Lord says, He who formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him, for I am honoured in the eyes of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. Now the Lord says, It is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob, and to bring back the preserved of Israel. I will make you as a light for all the nations, that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. So we say the song of the Blessed Virgin Mary in the Magnificat. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour, for he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed, for he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He has showed strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath holpen his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed for ever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our second lesson is written in the Gospel of St. Matthew, the fifth chapter, beginning at the 13th verse. It's part of what we normally know as the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus said, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its flavour, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Many of you will have joined us for morning prayer on this VE day and on that occasion I found myself on the roof of the deanery looking out onto the peaceful scene set round me and comparing it to what my predecessor would have seen on May the 8th, 1945, a scene of great destruction and a scene in need of years of patient rebuilding and new resources. This afternoon we come to a place of quiet memorial, but something rather wonderful happened this morning when we were on the roof we were suddenly surrounded by the enormous speed of a flight of swifts who had arrived on their long journey from Africa with the screaming cries which the swifts had with their, their bow-like wings as they fly around you. So swift you can hardly see them. They live on the wing except when they're nesting. It was a wonderful scene of great joy. They wheeled around us and one was reminded by their shape of the citizens of Kent in those years of 1940 and 41 looking up into the sky 
and seeing spitfires of that kind of shape wheeling around in the blue sky. The Swifts had come as harbingers of peace and we enjoyed their presence. No doubt from now on for a month or two we shall see them in the blue sky around us catching flies, sometimes high, sometimes low. But Swifts are wonderful birds to watch. But it reminded me of the mission of a great friend of mine. His name is Mark Corris and he is a sculptor of creatures, of birds and animals and does so wonderfully well but has a great burden for the preservation and the life of our planet. I say the Swift reminded me of him because he has a special project in mind. I first got to know him because his son is a portrait painter. His name Jamie Corris and he was the one who I chose almost as a, a, a coming together of influences from the past because we found we had so much in common but in 2015 I was told that to complete the the, the series of portraits of Deans. We looked at the first one the other day with Dean Wharton and none must be missing and I'd held off and held off and Jamie came to paint my portrait and so also I met his father Mark and learned of his vision for the world. I've got in my hand something here which Mark has created in bronze. It is of course a swift and you can see its shape. Mark has a vision because he was asked by the Order of St John of Jerusalem, with which I've had long connections, to provide for their eye clinic right in the heart of Jerusalem at Muristan, that holy city which is holy to Jews and to Christians and to Muslims alike, to provide some piece of sculpture which spoke of unity and understanding. And Mark had no idea what it would be until he went for the first time to Jerusalem, I think in 2016, and he found that as he went around the Holy Land, olive trees were everywhere. And the olive combined age, written very clearly in its trunk, gnarled and aged, and new life in its leaves and fruits, so precious with the oil it gives, but also sim so symbolic of the need for peace in the world if anything is to grow and develop. The dove with the olive branch in its mouth speaks of peace. But they wanted something which spoke not only of the solidity and long, long history of Jerusalem, but also of all those passing through it constantly as pilgrims and worshippers at holy places. And Mark found that while he was there, Swifts were arriving halfway on their journey from Africa to here, but also going east also into Asia, even to Beijing. And the Swifts would nest in the ancient walls of various places, many of them holy places, so that they seemed like a unifying factor, a sign of peace. And Mark created a wonderful bronze cast by Palestinians, some were Christian, also helped by those of the Jewish faith and Islamic faith, they cast an olive shaped by an olive tree in Bethlehem and they brought that to Jerusalem but the leaves were not to be leaves of the olive but swifts, flights of swifts, each stem bearing three as a representative of the three faiths which find Jerusalem a holy place, Christianity, Islam and Judaism. 
and of the hope for respect and understanding between faiths as a foundation stone for the healing of our planet and the life of the nations in hope and in peace. The screaming of the Swifts on this celebration of Peace in Europe Day was truly a wonderful messenger to say not only do we have to give thanks for peace, we have to use its gifts as gifts of God in all sorts of ways which will heal humanity, living creation and the whole planet for it is God's gift to us and the planet deserves our care in all forms of life. How much more we could say about that, but on this day somehow the sunshine and the green growth and this lovely piece of sculpture by my friend Mark Corrith says it all. May we have peace on earth springing out from this day of celebration. So we come to say our prayers and as we do so we remember that this day, the 8th of May, is also the feast day of Dame Julian of Norwich. Far be it from me as Dean of Canterbury to speak about her because one of my canons, Canon Emma Pennington, our canon missioner, is a great expert on Julian of Norwich and she has just written the most lovely book about her and she has helped me by reading that book to understand the revelations of divine love and the way in which Julian realized that this earth was sacramental, speaking of God in every aspect and God's care and love. She was the one who held a hazelnut in her hand and saw the whole of creation in that little nut and also the one who said all will be well, all will be well and all manner of things will be well. Well on that this day particularly we pray that this may be so. So our prayers. Lord have mercy upon us. Christ have mercy upon us. Lord have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The collect for this third Sunday after Easter. Almighty God, who showest to them that be in error the light of thy truth, to the intent that they may return into the way of righteousness, Grant unto all them that are admitted into the fellowship of Christ's religion that they may eschew those things that are contrary to their profession and follow all such good things as are agreeable to the same. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And the prayer special to this day of Julian of Norwich. Most holy God, the ground of our beseeching, who through your servant Julian revealed the wonders of your love. Grant that as we are created in your nature and restored by your grace, our wills may be so made one with yours that we may come to see you face to face and gaze on you forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So a moment of silence for our own prayers in which we pray for our own journey, like the Swifts, journeying constantly, but hopefully harbingers of peace and healing and wholesome things to whomsoever we shall meet. Pray for those whom we know need our prayers at this time, a time of lockdown, but also a time of people in our hearts that we've read about, seen on televisions and newspapers who need our prayers and need our help at this time and every encouragement and constantly to pray for those whom we love. We hold silence for a moment.
and the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this day and always. Amen.